John Lennon is a famous British rock musician, singer, poet, composer, artist, writer and activist, one of the creators and member of the Beatles, considered the most famous musician of the 20th century. After the group broke up, his solo career began. In 1980, an attempt was made on the musician and he was killed by former fan of the group, Mark Chapman. For more than 40 years, John Lennon's killer, Mark David Chapman, has been in prison, but can he be considered the only culprit in the death of the musician? The last day of the ex beatles life, December 8, 1980, was scheduled minute by minute. John Lennon seemed to feel that he had a lot to do. In the morning there will be a photo session with Annie Leibovitz, the same famous one in which naked John hugs his clothed wife. Afterwards, work in the studio on a new, and last, composition. Fans were always waiting for the musician at the gates of Dakota House, an elite house in Manhattan. This Monday was no exception. Before boarding the limousine, John Lennon willingly signed copies of his new album, Double Fantasy, and even took a photo with Mark Chapman, the future killer. Six hours later, in the same Dakota House arc, the rock and roll legend was gone. The stranger fired five expansive, increasing the affected area, bullets into Lennon's back. The first one passed by, but the others left the victim no chance. The arriving police themselves took Lennon to the nearest hospital, but it was too late. Cardiac arrest occurred due to painful shock and massive loss of blood. What about the killer? He could have easily escaped. There was a subway nearby, but he remained at the crime scene. He sat down on the curb, opened Salinger's novel, The Catcher in the Rye, and began to read. 25-year-old Mark David Chapman has had a difficult life. Born in Texas into a poor family of a retired U.S. Air Force sergeant. At home he was beaten by his father. At school by his classmates. The only thing that made the downtrodden guy happy was the Beatles. When it broke up, Lennon became Chapman's only comforter. Mark covered the walls with posters of him. Began playing his songs let his hair look like the Beatles, and even started using his idol's signature. Chapman never received a higher education. He became interested in religion and visited several countries on a humanitarian mission. After treatment in a psychiatric clinic, he settled in Hawaii and married a Japanese woman, Gloria Abe. Of course, in imitation of Lenin, like Yoko Ono, Mark's wife was several years older than him. Chapman immediately admitted to his wife that he wanted to kill his idol. Because the Beatles broke up because of John's affair with Yoko Ono, because Lennon betrayed the ideals of his youth, from a poor rebel he turned into a well-fed bourgeois. He dreamed of leading humanity to freedom and brotherhood, but he himself was mired in quiet family happiness. Then why did Chapman tell the police otherwise? What killed John for his blasphemous remarks? Why did he deal with the musician for the sake of his own fame? That he, Chapman, is the real Lennon, and the murdered one is his pathetic double? Moreover, it turned out that Chapman arrived in New York to shoot any star. For example, David Bowie, Paul McCartney, Elizabeth Taylor. Jacqueline Kennedy or even Ronald Reagan. Over the years, Chapman became completely confused in his lies. For example, he justified his action with Salinger's favorite novel, The Catcher in the Rye. Allegedly, this work made Mark hate the entire American establishment, and the main character of the book, Holden Caulfield, is him, Mark Chapman. However, this version has also outlived its usefulness. Killer Chapman said that he was ordered to pull the trigger and kill Lennon, by devilish voices. Apparently, he himself does not know the true motive for the crime. It's easy to close any case by placing all the blame on the mentally ill. This turned out to be, for example, Lee Harvey Oswald, John Kennedy's killer, 
or Sirhan, Robert Kennedy's killer, but is it possible to believe that they acted alone? A similar case with the case of John Lennon, behind the apparent simplicity, suspicious coincidences and facts emerge. Could Chapman be a puppet in the hands of the CIA and FBI? Quite. The musician has said more than once that he is being watched. U.S. state security agents confirmed this fact in 2006. They even emphasized that Lenin was listed as an enemy of the state. The reason is clear. Criticism of the Vietnam War, calling the Pentagon a brothel of aggression, supplying money to the British Workers' Party, as well as Irish nationalists. Nixon tolerated Lenin, but Reagan might not have wanted to. After taking power in 1981, he ordered an attack on communist Granada and escalated the Cold War as a whole. Would he have pulled off something like this if Lenin was alive? After all, the legendary Beatle more than once led thousands of Americans to anti-war pickets. There is another version of the murder. John Lennon was ordered by Yoko Ono herself. The motive is clear. By the age of 40, the musician had become an icon of world culture, and therefore, you can make money from his legacy forever. Why did the couple leave the limousine earlier than usual on that fateful evening, wandered down the street, and then turned into a dark arch without security? Why did Yoko, walking ahead of her husband, notice a stranger in a dark corner, but not be alarmed? And why didn't Chapman shoot her? After all, she was a celebrity too, and, according to his version, destroyed the Beatles. The version becomes plausible when you consider that Yoko soon established her personal life. Just six months after the death of her husband, her new chosen one was the Hungarian antique dealer Samuel Havidtoy, once again a bohemian personality and again younger than Ono. This union was secret for a long time almost two decades. There are two more versions of Lennon's murder, less plausible, but very interesting. The first is religious, supposedly John, who considered the Beatles as apostles of a new faith, terribly irritated the Vatican. So the Holy Fathers took sin upon their souls, and Chapman was very religious. He could take on such an ideological order. Finally, the final hypothesis, the computer corporation Apple dealt with the legend of rock and roll. Allegedly, John Lennon intended to sue Jobs and Wozniak for colossal money for the stolen name. Indeed, Paul McCartney was the first to name his company Apple, and only eight years later Steve Jobs encroached on this brand. On the other hand, the Apple Music Company was owned by all the Beatles, not just Lennon. And the litigation between musicians and computer scientists ended with a penny gain, only $80,000 in favor of the former. It's easier to pay than to kill someone. And yet, for many years, many fans of John Lennon have been haunted by the question, why was he so careless? The last years of his life provide the answer. John Lennon spent the first half of the 1970s as the new Che Guevara. He organized dozens of anti-war actions and vowed to give all his royalties for world peace. And suddenly, after playing a concert with Elton John at Madison Square Garden, he disappeared in 1974. For five years he did not release an album, did not leave the house, bought apartments, mansions, yachts and even islands. In reality, Lennon simply matured. He married again, became a father again. I plunged into family happiness and suddenly became afraid that the rebel John was no longer there. Something very important was missing. Maybe recklessness? So he released the limousine with the guards and turned into a dark arch. Being a genius is no fun. This is torture. The musician once admitted. You can run away from this anywhere, even to the next world. Write in the comments who really killed John Lennon and what could have been his fate if this tragic situation had not occurred. Subscribe to the channel and like if you found it interesting.